So how do we go ahead and extract our greetings from our data store? Well, just like we call the greetings kind or the greetings class to insert items to our data store, we call the greetings kind or the greetings class because we want to query over this class, right? So we go ahead and call the greetings and then greetings has a method, method called query. Now, if we wanted to filter out some results from our data store, we would pass in filters here. Since we are not going to do this right now, we'll leave this just empty. And then the last thing we need to do is to actually fetch all the items from the data store. So we can say fetch. Okay. Also, we don't here if we wanted to limit the amount of results, let's say to 10, we, we can type in 10, 100 results, then 100. We're not going to be doing this either. We'll just leave it blank. So right, so now we are fetching items from the data store, so we need to save them to a variable. So let's say results is equal to all of that. So now in results, we should have all the items that we are extracting from our data store. So let's go ahead and actually print out the results to our console, and we will see if this is true. So this HTML should be exactly the same. It should not break, and we are just going to print out the results to our console. So let's go ahead here and refresh our home page. So great, we see that our HTML is fine. It's exactly the same. And here we see we in fact have a greetings here. And a greetings has a key, which we will dive into keys in much more detail in the future. A key is kind of like a unique identifier of each row or of each instance we are retrieving or saving to our data store. And then we can see the message is hello, the name is Michael, and the timestamp is a date time. Okay, so okay, great. We are retrieving our greetings from our data store. And if you see here, we have square brackets, right? This means that this is a list. And the list currently has one item because we have just saved one thing into our data store. But, you know, we, we can see that this is a list. So if we insert another item, there will be more items in this list. Okay, great. Let's go back into our HTML and see how we can this print this out. Okay, let's delete the print statement and let's go ahead and if you remember from the previous video, we can access item by item by using a for loop. So we can say for result in results and then we will indent the HTML inside of this for loop because we want to add to the HTML each greeting. Now, <clears throat> now in for loops, the name we give each individual item, in this case result, it can be any name you want. So in my case, I tend to call the, the individual item the single version of whatever I have as a list. So if my list is the, the in plural results, then this will be the single of results, which is just result, okay? Okay, so let's add to our HTML the greetings, okay? So let's go and say, for example, first we want to print out the date. So I'll say result dot timestamp because this is how we called the 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 attribute in our greetings model so result of timestamp And since timestamp is a datetime format, okay, here we can see it's datetime dot datetime. And then in parentheses, we have the, the numbers which represent the date and the time at which this was inserted. But we can just go ahead and print out a datetime. This would give us an error. We need to convert the datetime into a string. So we do this by applying the method called strf time. And then this method accepts a string which will mark the format that we want to print out our our date time. So let's type in percent uppercase y dash percent m dash percent day. Now this is basically saying that we want the year separated by a dash and then the month and then separated by a dash and then the day. So now we're going to type in a space 
because we want to separate the, the date from the time with the space and say percent H colon percent M and the H will be a uppercase okay so now we have our date time as a string so the next thing we want to add onto this string remember all of this this is a date time but when you apply the strf time method this is all evaluated to string so we can add to the string let's say a dash to separate the time from the name and then we can say result dot name again name is the is the name of the attribute that we gave the greetings kind and say name then add to it said and then finally add our result dot message so essentially this will read a time separated by a dash name said message okay so let's go ahead and see if this is working so let's go back and refresh and we see that this is working so we have our date time formatted as a string okay with the format that we specified so this was the percent y the percent m percent d then the space and the percent s h sorry and the percent m okay so this is marking how we want to illustrate the string okay this date time as a string and then we said okay well, i want to separate it with a dash and say name said message so michael said hello okay 